Hi there, this is Alana. You guys are listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with Jamie Hampton. How is it going, Jamie? It's going. I almost forgot to hit record. I don't know why, but I was just sitting there. You're like, I'm ready. I almost <laughs> forgot. And I'm just sitting there like, great, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. I, yeah, I'm the one that has to push the button. So, Happy yeah. episodes. Like, we, we haven't had many tech issues in a while. I think like Knock Zoom's gotten better. No kidding. Our internet connections are better mm-hmm. and just we're more used to it. But how many episodes do you think are just like gone, you know, that we thought we were doing and <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was, we, we've had our share of tech difficulties, but not lately. So not lately. Yeah. Things been going smoothly. The internet here I think is working well. So for those of you who, um, I guess don't, have a telepathic connection to me and my family. <laughs> I'll let you know we're, we've moved. And so this is the first time Jamie and I were recording with me in my new office in our new home. So hopefully the tech will continue to go well. And hopefully there's not a big echo. I was just telling Jamie there's a, it's the first time we haven't had carpets. And so it's just hardwood, which I know can make it more echoey. So we'll see how that translates on the audio quality side of things. Yeah, sounds good to me. I can hear you loud and clear. So, well, I hear you too. Nice. Tell me something fun. Like, how are your? Oh, we need the puppy update. I know the the real live pup date. So we got a puppy a week ago Friday. So we're recording mm-hmm. on a Tuesday. So we've had him a for a little over a over week. A week. Mm-hmm. He's great. He's Aww. just great. Like I was gearing myself up for real hard work because it is it's hard work Mm -hmm. having a puppy Mm -hmm. Um, but the last time we had a puppy I was I had a 13 month old child yeah a puppy so what I'm finding now is that my capacity to take care of the puppy is so much bigger because I don't Mm -hmm. have a tiny child yeah yeah to care for um so, and the kids are a huge help. They've been doing really a lot of the work. Um, my daughter, it, our daughter is six. And I mean, I think I shared this before, but it's too funny not to repeat when we were, maybe I didn't share this. We, so we were trying to guess the number of dogs in the litter of right, the, right. to I see if we were, you know, mm-hmm. and so, and then we were trying to say, okay, if we can guess the number of dogs in the litter, the number of yellow labs, the number of black labs that are going to be in there, whoever gets the most correct gets the prize and you get to pick what prize you get. So like our oldest picked not picking up any of the poo for the first week. Um, I don't remember what the others picked, but then, but my, our daughter, our six year old, who's like the caretaker. um, And even when we dog sit, she takes care of the dogs a lot, but she was like, I think picking up the puppy's poo should be the prize. That's so cute. (laughs) So it was hilarious. I think I actually won and I did not claim any prize. I don't even know if I... Isn't that how it goes when you're the mom? It's not quite as fun. (laughs) It's not. So, but it's been great. He's been a, just his temperament has been good. He's obviously a puppy. He chews. He's kind of a stinker. But um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but he's great. It's been really a good transition. And we took cool. him camping for the first time this last weekend. And we've got to be careful because he hasn't had all of his parvo vaccines and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we can't mm-hmm. have him interact with a whole bunch of dogs. Um, he needs to social distance. Which is fine because we were social distanced anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. But he he did really well on the trip. And he's actually sleeping through the night. He's like, That's you know. Great. Yeah. So he's doing a good job. Yeah. Where does he sleep? In his crate. So we've gotten this. So he starts off in his crate. Just that's kind of his to make sure that he doesn't go to the bathroom and wander. Mm -hmm. But I'll take him out. And right now he'll he'll, like I'm waking up before he does usually to make coffee for Matt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll make coffee for Matt. I'll take him outside. And then if Matt's leaving early, like, you know, I'm waking him up. Usually I'm getting up like between six and six 30 most days. Mm-hmm. And then after my husband leaves, I usually lay back down for a little while and mm-hmm. the puppy will come and sleep with me. And he, Aww. after I know he's gone to the bathroom and he's good. And mm-hmm. so he lays down with me and he's very fine, you know, most of the time. Yeah. So, yep. That's adorable. It's fun. I'm so he's, happy for you guys. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's fun. Well, we have puppy updates, good yeah. and bad. Um, we had to find a new home for Kitty, which was so, so heartbreaking. 
um, there was an accident with her and another dog in the neighborhood and we don't have a fence here and she just she wasn't going to be able to be here anymore it was it was terrible but thankfully uh, we found a new home with friends of ours who who know her a little bit already they're sending us pictures and oh, that's so we good. miss her like crazy it's hard um, but we're thankful that she's got a good home I mean it would have been just heartbreaking if we had to do a shelter or something like that yeah. um, so that's the sad news and then the good news is in a few more weeks we're going to be adopting a Malamute puppy and so that's something fun for the kids to look forward to and we still have coffee she's still basically a puppy I mean she's only maybe like eight months old and she's doing well so we're training her on an electric fence and it's going pretty well. It's actually kind of sad because it, it buzzed her once and she was so scared that now we take her out to the backyard where it's set up and instead of playing, she just kind of sits and looks at us like, <laughs> like she feels like she's not allowed to go anywhere. I mean, it's a huge space. It's, I mean, you've, I think you've seen our backyard. Like it's three times the size of the backyard that we had. Wow. But so she's, it's, it's not like she's it's, probably going to It's not get like that. she's in this little like two foot by two foot thing, but she hasn't quite figured out like where the boundaries are. And so she's like, I'm just going to be safe and sit here, but she's figuring it out. And it's, she cute. will. And yeah. She's learned how to swim and it's so cute. Cause there's this little stream Aww. by the house. We took her, she just took off swimming and when it was just time to go home, jumped right in. Like she jumped, just, well, not right in, but then my son was trying to skip rocks. And so she dove in for uh, the rock. to try to get the rock. And then was like, wait, what? Yeah. You could tell she was a little bit startled. Like what just happened? And then like half a minute later, she was just swimming like crazy. And when it came time to bring her home, she threw like an actual toddler fit and it was adorable. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. fun. Now she's a Springer Spaniel. She is. Are yeah. they, I'm wondering if they're water dogs by nature they must they're hunting because, of some sort yeah we have never had a dog who loves water even close to the degree Aww, that she does that is so like, fun we've had dogs who will kind of wade but right. never like just dive in and she'll do, and we keep her on the leash and she's just going in these little circles just and paddling leaping, around oh paddling my around very cute so that yes we have happy and sad mm. things going on in the dog world yeah Kitty well, was a sweetie though. I'm gonna have to like go back and watch some of our videos because you, I mean, you'd see she'll just wander behind me. I'm oh sure yeah, there were ones where she was dozens in dozens of videos of Kitty just wandering behind me. So mm -hmm. when I when I miss her, I might just pull up some of those. Oh yeah, we'll miss Kitty. We sure will. But we are not here to talk about dogs. This is actually not the praying dog lovers podcast for that work or the dog loving women's podcast <laughs> praying dog loving women's podcast the puppy women are we puppy women i don't i don't know i don't like the sound of that puppy mamas no because then mamas. that would make us female dogs <laughs> yeah yeah if we were the mothers of puppies and we're not although kitty i'm i'm convinced she thought i was her mom like she would Aww. snuggle when she got scared or like if she didn't feel good like i was definitely the mommy i don't feel good Oh, kidding. anyway, <laughs> right. Enough. We just went right back. I'm sorry. We went right back. No, that's my fault. We've got, I've got dogs on the mind. So today we're talking about prayer regrets. I'm really excited about this. It actually, I'll dive into this when we get into our actual topic, but kind of what we went through with Kitty is what got me thinking through mm. this. So I'm sure this, will, this episode is dedicated to Kitty. <laughs> and yeah, should we open in a word of prayer? Let's do it. Okay. I am, I'm having trouble with my controls here. I'm like looking for my, okay. All right. I'm good. Let's pray. All righty. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to record an episode and just pray that you would help us to really be focused on you. Um, and Lord, we thank you for Kitty. We just pray that, that her new home would be, um, just a great place for her. We pray that, that, uh, Alana and her family would be able to have interaction with her and still get updates and see her. And we just thank you for being in that whole situation and working it out. God, we just pray for this time. We pray that you would help us direct our thoughts and just prompt us as we discuss these things, just how we can be better prayers and how we can be more connected to you and just how to view prayer and, and to look forward 
um, having learned from some of the, the prayer regrets that we might have from the past. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So since we didn't get to it before we got on the air, should we, should we have our confession moment? We should. Yeah, definitely. Well, I know for me, um, it's been hard. I mean, it, it's certainly hard losing Kitty and some of that's just being sad and missing her. But there's been part of me, like I've been grumbling. I've been like, well, if I knew we were going to have to get rid of the dog, I wouldn't have like agreed to move anyway. <laughs> you know, just some of these, you know, not being gracious, not being charitable, really going down the, well, if only kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. um, like if we had taken her out for her walk 10 minutes earlier or 10 minutes later, you know, so she got into a fight with the neighbor dog, which is kind of what started things. And, you know, so there's all kinds of if onlys, what onlys, why we decide to go here. So I've been kind of fighting not only with being sad, but just kind of that grumbly attitude sort of, and mm -hmm. almost like, um, you know, what were you thinking god telling us to move here and you know just kind of being hoity-toity about well, that and i was just going to ask i mean is some of that like well god you could have warned me you know could yes. you have let me know that that we oh, exactly. shouldn't have gone at this time exactly or? oh yeah it was totally that was totally there yeah. um or, you know even the move itself i would have i would have stayed in our nice fenced in backyard if we could have <laughs> you know so i i feel like i'm doing a lot of grumbling like the israelites you know we were thankful for this opportunity. We were excited to move. And then we got here and the very next day, this thing happened. And so now I'm like the Israelites, well, just let's go back to Egypt, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's yeah. understandable. Yeah. What about you? I think me. Um, so I think the last time we talked, I was that we did a confession on the air. I was talking about like, just, um, not being able to get, at, yeah, something about like just not being able to get stuff done and feeling like maybe mm -hmm. like this lazy kind of like just resigned attitude. Um, that is not actually the worst thing right now. I'm still not where I want to be, but I'm better. And I think having mm -hmm. the dog, like it's kind of funny because I was getting to the point where I was really enjoying my sleep and I was not liking yeah. to get... But now that I kind of got used to getting woken up and mm -hmm. like, it's not a big deal. So I'm actually, right. you know, I'm able to get quite a bit done. The thing for me this time is um, because of the lack of sleep for several days in a row or a week in a row or whatever it was, because there's still off and on times where he gets kind of, you know, mm -hmm. needs to go out more. Um, I, it's like when I was getting up with children in the middle of the night where right. like my, yeah, like yeah. I'm a different person because of fatigue. Right. <laughs> um, right. and I even had insomnia the other night, which I don't usually have at all. And mm -hmm. so I just, I couldn't sleep and I was kind of worried about him cause he was acting funny and having some issues, but everything was fine. But I, I just, um, I've been kind of a different person. I've been, um, just mean to the kids sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. just finding myself yelling at them to stop treating each other in a mean way or stop talking mm -hmm. to each other in a mean way and then realizing I'm telling them in a mean way right right not to talk to each other that way so I think there's a trickle down there too so that's my yeah that's my biggest one I think is just not letting not letting uh the added stress of the puppy turn me into a different person and like take that yeah. out on the kids so I think that that's sense. one um, yeah. And I think just kind of a, I really easily, and one of our other episodes that I think we're going to record soon um, has to do with like recognizing your temptations. And so one of the things I'm starting to realize that one of my big easy pitfalls is the martyr complex, the victim mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. So there's been some of that. And I have been saying things out loud that I never wanted to say like, like martyr stuff, stuff like, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that you picture, you know, crotchety old woman saying like, right, well, right. well, if I ever got any help around the house, then maybe uh -huh. blah, blah, blah. You know, if I wasn't the yeah. only one doing all this stuff, stuff right. like that, where, or little jabs at like, well, you know, I've, I've got to do all this stuff. So just like the martyr complex and the victim mentality, mm -hmm. not even just pertaining to the dog, but just to other stuff too. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's that is something that attitude that needs to be mm -hmm. fixed. 
Mm -hmm. I found that when we got our, our puppy, um, coffee, the one we still have, mm -hmm. we got her as like an eight week old and I wasn't in love with the idea of a second dog and especially not a puppy. I'm mm -hmm. super glad we got her now. But at the time I was like, you know, Kitty's a perfect dog. We don't need another. <laughs> that was truly my thought. Yeah. And what I found, cause I was doing that grumbly thing too. And this is actually something that I can keep in mind about the move and the new house and stuff too. It really helps me to just remind myself, you know what? You chose this. Like I was the one who came to my right. husband and I was like, you know, I think, it, I think it's time that we can consider another puppy. It wasn't as if he held a gun to my head and said, we're getting this other puppy, whether you want it or not. It was, I chose this. I agreed to this mm -hmm. and everything that comes with it, you know? So yep. yeah, I chose to go along with this move and move to a place with no fence and it didn't work out for Kitty, but it's not, it's a little bit harder to become the martyr when you remind yourself that like you're the one who had the choice right. to do it or not. <laughs> well, and even if you didn't have a choice, like let's say for my stuff, True. like, it, like mm -hmm. with the, with the house stuff where I'm like, well, I'm, I'm the only one you doing didn't this. choose to have an earthquake. Yeah. Well, right. No, but I chose, but when it comes to just, um, in general, anything, you have a choice yeah. of how to respond. I have you a do. choice instead of grumbling about it. I can become a better home manager. I can delegate better to my kids. I can create jobs for them instead of complaining right. that stuff isn't getting done rather than just taking it on myself. I need exactly. to just, you know, find a way to move forward in it. And that is, that's freeing to, to it shift your thinking that way, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Yeah, no, I, I think we're on a similar page going through similar things, which is mm -hmm. kind of how it's been for years <laughs> between I know. the two of us. <laughs> Living well, a parallel a, universe, even having, uh, well, we didn't, we didn't know each other when we had kids in the same, well, it wasn't even in the same year. So yeah. Yeah. Our, our two oldest are our real oldest close are age, closer, but we didn't know, yeah, each, other we didn't know each other point. then. Yeah. But yeah. we're having puppies at I know time. we're like puppy, puppy ants. Is that kind of how it's going to work? <laughs> yes. I, we still have this problem talking about our pets and who's the mom, who's the dad, who's the sibling. Actually, I think yeah. it's really sweet because my, my middle son, so the younger of the two sons, who's nine, will say, we'll call him little bro. He's like, Aww, he, cute. he's my little bro. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that is cute. Yeah, we do like Scott and I are mommy and daddy, and yeah. then the boys are the brothers or that's the boys. Kind of, yeah, that's like, how Where's I. Where's your boy? Go find your boy. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Kitty thought that she was my youngest mother, <laughs> and so <laughs> she would like she thought that he was a puppy. She's so maternal, and so she would like you know give him a bath every morning. Oh my goodness, that, cute. <laughs> that is really sweet. Yes. Yes. Again, sorry for anybody like who hates dogs, who's listening, go ahead. Feel free to skip this episode. I think it's going to come I'll up put, a lot. I'll put that on our, our like description, show notes, whatever you want to call it. If you hate I'll dogs. If you hate yeah. dogs, skip this who episode. Who really hates dogs? Seriously. Who hates puppies? I, I know. All right. Puppies? All right. First of the day. <laughs> First of the day. As a dog returns to its vomit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. I like that. Um, where'd it go? Uh, I see it. You want me to read it? No, I've got, yeah, you okay. can read it, but I, what's wrong with me? <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a little bit since we've recorded. Yeah, you go ahead All right. and read it. Ezekiel 2230. I'll read it and then you can expound on it because you're really okay. good at it. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but I found no one. Yeah, and I chose that just because it sort of, I mean, it pretty uh, obviously mm -hmm. illustrates the fact that God was looking, that yeah. if, he, if there had been someone willing to stand in the gap on behalf of the land, Mm -hmm. that God would not have to destroy it. And, you know, yeah. did God know there was no one? Sure he did. Did God orchestrate that? Maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah. But the bottom could line God is, have twisted someone's arm and said, you're going to be the guy to stand in the right. gap? Yeah, because he, he can move right. people to pray. Right. But mm -hmm. the, the point is that, that there was no one. And so that leads me to believe logically that if there had been someone that it would have been spared. So I just I thought, agree. you know, mm -hmm. so in talking about prayer regrets, I think that's one 
scripture that we can keep in mind to kind of, you know, just say, yeah, it, prayer does change things and there are missed opportunities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then at what point do you just accept God's will and kind of accept fate? Right. Do you know what I mean? Cause right. that's it's Cause then really, you get really hard because mm -hmm. like I, I know of Christians who feel so guilty and they're, um, they're thinking kind of as well, you know, if I had prayed for that person to have a safe trip, they wouldn't have gotten in that car accident. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, that's possibly true, you know? So what got me thinking about this was like, I prayed, once we moved, I was looking through my prayer journal of things that I was specifically and regularly praying for about the house, about the kids, about the move itself. And I did not put the dogs on there at all. I just took for granted that they were going to be fine and that we were going to have them forever. And so that's what got me thinking, well, what if I had prayed for them to settle in well? Would that have changed? And the part of me that has been on the air saying, yes, prayer changes history has to say, yeah, that type of prayer could have made a difference. Mm -hmm. But the part of me that kind of recognizes that life is life and what's happened is happened also has to say, well, God, like this has to be part of God's plan. Otherwise it would just be too depressing, <laughs> you <Right>. know? <laughs> well, I think about these kind of things and we could get into it more later after our just for fun. But, you know, I, I think about these things with travel prayers because yeah. we, for the most part, when our family gets ready to go on a trip, especially if we're mm -hmm. pulling the trailer or something, we'll stop and somebody will pray and we'll pray that mm -hmm. God would protect us, that he would give us wisdom and whatever, the driver, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And I just remember there was this one time that we did not pray for travel safety and we had a near miss. And my mm -hmm. husband, by the grace of God, was able to like maneuver mm -hmm. and things were good. But it occurred to me, we didn't pray for safety yeah. and yet we were safe. And so, you know, it's like that same, how does it work? And do you, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, it's I, hard. You know, it's, it's hard to know. So it's like, well, um, but anyway, that, that's just yeah, another, well, that's, another side yeah. of the many faceted coin. <laughs> we're, we're opening up a huge box kind of diving into this. Yeah. So let's start with our just for fun though. So what's the okay. last purchase you made that you regret? A pair of jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Costco jeans. Whenever I've okay. gone to Costco, they're, they, they do me well. They're like, they fit well, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. comfortable. They don't like, you know, not to get too graphic, but you know, some jeans, you have to wear certain underwear for them mm -hmm. not to protrude out the back of the jeans. I don't protrude. That yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right. Go on. <laughs> it's protruding underwear syndrome. Yes. Yes. P U S. <laughs> It's an epidemic in this, yes. uh, no, go anyway, on. <laughs> so uh, Costco jeans usually are good. So I bought a pair of Costco jeans and I didn't just buy one. I bought two because they were cheap enough that I thought, and I, I was out of jeans that didn't have rips in them. Mm -hmm. So I bought two pairs of Costco jeans and they didn't fit right. They're like, they, uh, they're, I'm con, I don't know if I didn't get the right size. Maybe I didn't mm -hmm. like, you know, account for COVID gain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> But it's a time in women's lives, Jamie, when your metabolism's going to shift a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, unfortunate Costco jeans. They've never failed me before. So I was like, I'm going to buy two. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. Regret. How about you? Well, I'm very uh, picky about what I do buy. So like my husband and I, we found early on that assigning a number value helped us to communicate better. If I, because I, my husband, like he's such a gift giver that I would say something like, you know, I, I think a Roomba would be kind of fun. And like the next day he would have a Roomba and it, and well, so like, nice. in a way, but in a way, then, like it, it got a little overwhelming. <laughs> right. Cause you're like, well, but the, we didn't like, decide if it would really right, fit in yes, the house, if it would. Right. Yeah. And so I just, we started assigning numbers to things like, I want this a two or I want this an eight. And like, for me, like I need to want it about an eight or higher on a scale of one to 10 to make the purchase. I love and that. What a great idea. You know, it makes it so I don't really regret many things because <laughs> I'm great. so, oh. but, um, you know, so 
when, so, okay. So last month, my husband had the job out here, but the home that we've now moved into wasn't ready. And so he was commuting. He would go in, um, be home with us on the weekends and be out here during the week. So we had three or four weeks where for like basically weekdays, my kids and I were home alone and I ordered a home security system, knowing that it probably wouldn't get there in time for us to set it up at the, you know, at the new place. I'm sorry, at the old place. But I was like, well, you know, at the very least, once we're here, it was something that had been on my mind anyway. And then I got here and just like, I don't know, there's so many doors and so many windows and the thought of like getting every single one of them set up. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about going with something maybe a little simpler. So that one is perhaps I, you know, it, it, was kind of silly to make a purchase for a home when I hadn't even seen the home yet. You know, like I just had to guess how many windows and, you know, entryways and things. So. Right. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. There we have it. You guys were listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast and thanks for joining us. That was All a good right. episode. It was. All right. Now. Okay. So back to prayer regrets now. Um, where yeah. do you want to start? Well, I kind of feel like there are two types of prayer regrets. Like there's one where we could talk about, have you ever regretted praying for something and getting it? And the other would be regretting not praying about something that you wish you had prayed for. I mean, I think the second right. one is probably more common, but I'm just curious, have you ever prayed for something? You know, like, do you know the Garth Brooks song, Some of God's Greatest Gifts Are Unanswered Prayers? He talks about yeah, how but yeah. he basically talks about he thought he loved this girl. He prayed that they'd be together yeah. forever and then they weren't and he met an even better girl. So, yeah. you know, you know, which song along those lines I do like, I don't listen to much country, but I really like God bless the broken road. Similar, oh, yeah. similar concept. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, you I know, wonder, so on the flip side, is there something that you have prayed for that you have that you gotten have, and then you think, hmm. Maybe yeah, didn't really I can think this. of a couple things. So, you know, I think biblically, I, I think about the um, the Israelites asking for a king and God's like, yeah, you guys right. sure you want this? That's right. I was um, trying to think of a good one and that did not yeah. come to mind. But, you know, in my personal life, back when I was in late high school and early college, I was so obsessed with becoming a doctor and like, it was truly my, my life's biggest goal and dream. And I spent tons of energy just praying towards that end. I applied for an early admissions program to, so basically like when I went to the college I went to, my hope was to apply to this early admissions program to get like accepted into medical school early mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Like, so I kind of had this not even a tentative plan. Like I, I really had what I hoped and prayed would be what came about. Mm -hmm. And I applied for that program. And the year I applied was the first year that they opened it up to even more colleges. And so it, it didn't work out and I didn't get it. And so I guess that's an example of something I prayed for that looking back, I'm glad I didn't get, but the whole thing of like, years spent praying to become a doctor years spent praying to get into a pre-med program and like I'm I'm not there at all <laughs> yeah and I so I I was thinking about in terms of one of the regrets that I have sometimes is what I consider misplaced prayer energy on mm -hmm. something that it's like I yes. have something that I really want and I pray for it and pray for it and pray for it. Mm -hmm. And whether I get it or not, I, it doesn't end up being the one, the thing that I wanted or needed or yeah. it was best for me. Yeah. And I think, wow, that was a lot of time and energy spent praying for something that wasn't to be anyway. I agree. Yeah. Or, yeah. So that's, I, I have similar feelings about that. You know, I yeah. had a similar, another parallel of ours is I wanted to go to vet school. I planned, yeah. you know, I went to Virginia Tech because the Virginia Maryland Regional College was there um, of veterinary mm -hmm. medicine. And that's where I was going to go. I worked at the vet clinic and the yeah. like, you know, after hours clinic at the, as a receptionist and, you know, did all these things. And then it turned out not even to be and I don't regret mm -hmm. the journey because I believe God used that whole journey to get me where mm -hmm. I am today and mm -hmm. to meet the man that I ended up having right. our kids with, you know? So, yeah. but I, I do sometimes think about 
what I can learn from looking back is not to maybe, I, I don't know, but then, okay, so not to be too wishy-washy, but then as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking about um, our, my former youth pastor mm -hmm. in high school and my dad. So I had gotten the story wrong when we had our parking space prayers um, episode. I thought it was a different person that he used to argue about the parking spaces with, but mm -hmm. it was our pastor's wife who was our youth leader. Uh -huh. And so my dad was recently telling me about this, how he was kind of giving her trouble for praying for parking spaces. And she said, mm -hmm. it's, don't you understand? It's not about the parking space. It's about the relationship. Like I, I pray to God for the parking space just because I include him in everything that I want or need. And, and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's mm -hmm. a relationship, you know, I'm, I'm, he wants to hear from me and I want to talk to him. And mm -hmm. so when I think of the misplaced prayers, like it does seem like there's misplaced prayer energy praying for that one thing, but it mm -hmm. doesn't take away from the fact that you spent that time connecting with God. That's a good point. So, you know, it's not really wasted. I think that's really cool. I think that a lot of times I, I picture what I love to do just creatively as a kind of prayer. Like I love brainstorming. Mm -hmm. A new novel and it, I really feel like I'm sitting down with God mm -hmm. getting these ideas out and you're right it's less about whether or not that story gets written or whether it's a good book or not it's more about the time spent on that project you know kind of like you and your husband working on the bathroom it's less about <laughs> whether or not you're gonna love the bathroom truly you know and more about the fact that you guys did this project together it took right. you a couple years but you did it <laughs> Still doing it, but oh, mostly man. done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. So that, that is interest. That's, that's an interesting perspective. So. Yeah. So maybe at those times where you and I, like as college aged young adults were pining, I love the way you put it in terms of just like focusing your prayer energy. You know, mm -hmm. I was focusing my prayer energy on med school and you were on vet school. And I know in between there, we both had relationships with people we didn't end up marrying. I'm sure those were prayer, you know, a lot of prayer energy went into mm -hmm. those relationships. And yeah. maybe it's less about the outcome and more about the fact that, hey, you know what, the things that we were passionate about and the things that were on our heart, we lifted up to God in prayer. I think that's a nice way to, to look at it instead of like shaking our fingers at our 20 year old selves. We're like, how dumb were you to think about going to med school? Don't you know, you would have hated that and more about, you know what, this is what you thought you wanted to do. And you invited God into that process. Maybe that's a more gentle way of looking at that. Yeah. Oh, I well, feel so good now. <laughs> right? Mic drop. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, one very sad prayer. I don't know if I would call this a regret. So okay. we, a couple of weeks ago, we were coming back from camping on the Kenai Peninsula and, or no, we were going down. We were going I, down. Yeah. And we were stopped like just several cars behind a really bad mm. accident. And did it you ended see the accident up, happen? We didn't. So I don't know when it had happened and it looked, it was maybe like a football field away, but I, mm -hmm. I feel like there were like, uh, they must've been way ahead and, and okay. the people in front of us must've stopped short, you know, when wow. they saw it happening. But um, when we got going, I think we were like sixth in line when it came to actually, mm -hmm. you know, when they cleared the accident away five hours though on the Yikes. highway waiting. And it was horrible though. We were close enough that, and, and not, no one had, no first responders had made it yet. And my husband and I were in the middle of having this conversation. Should someone go, should we go up there? And right. there was a crowd of like 25 people or so surround. Like we, if we moved over, we could see okay. the, the, results of the accident, but it was far mm -hmm. enough away. We couldn't see details or people. Right. Apparently there were people that had been ejected from the vehicles, Aww. two children. And it was, um, but it, we were talking like, should one of us go? Like, should, right. should, should we go and, and see if we could help or whatever? Mm -hmm. And right about the time we were discussing this, the cops started to come and the ambulances okay. and fire trucks. So we didn't go up there, but I just kept thinking like, I just, I wanted, should I go up there so I can pray with someone? Mm -hmm. Like, because mm -hmm. we were saying, well, what can we do? I'm not a medic. You know, I don't, we don't have any right. supplies. We don't have medical training. You know, we, our CPR mm -hmm. cards are not even current, but right. I thought, should I have walked up there? There were some people that were walking up 
to see what had happened. And they were, you know, they were coming back just telling us horrible things. And Aww. so, but I, what, I was just thinking like, I, one regret is that I didn't think about that more because it crossed my mm-hmm. mind and that I was like, no, there are too many people up there anyway. We don't want to interfere. Right, right. But what if I was the only person that would have prayed? prayed? Yeah. And yeah, so that, yeah, that's, that's kind of a regret that I have. We prayed a lot for those people. And it was a time mm-hmm. where I was really glad my kids, especially like we, we all prayed multiple times during that five hours that yeah, you know, for the families, for the people, the kids. And um, yeah, so I mean, that was a good thing. And that was positive. And if I wasn't there for that, maybe they wouldn't have prayed. And maybe my right, own children right. would not have had that experience. But anyway, all of that. I to think, say, yeah, I think there comes a point where you do. I think it's good to ask those types of questions. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing, like when a loved one dies, and you don't believe that they knew the Lord, you're, you're obviously going to ask yourself, should I have done something more? Could I have done something more? Should I have shared the gospel? And I think it's important to ask those questions. Mm-hmm. But there also needs to come a point where you realize what's done is done. And I think there needs to be for sure a humility in this, but I think I I almost hesitate to say it because I think some people are going to turn it into an excuse and I'm sure I've turned it into an excuse, Mm -hmm. but there's also, I mean, there, there is a sense of, you know what, if God really wanted you to get out of that car, don't you think he might've prompted you more strongly? And right. part of me doesn't want to put that on God because then we can just, we can sit back and cross our arms and say, okay, God, make me do it. And right. that's not the way it works. It's but, not. but, but there does come a point, like you could, you could truly drive yourself a little bit bananas if you think things through too much for too long, you know? Right. Cause the fact is you can't change it. But exactly what, what you can learn from for the future and what I'll take away is, you know what, when that thought crosses my mind, because I don't even necessarily regret not walking up there, but I just regret not asking God more directly. Hey, did exactly. you really, do you want mm-hmm. me to go up there or is that my own yes. idea? Because I've been uh-huh. in situations enough, like you said, to know that there are times when I can't escape it. And I'm like, no, <gasps> not me. No, I don't want to do that. And, and Mm -hmm. then it just keeps coming and coming and you get kind of sweaty and like, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. So there are times when God has really put pressure on me to do something. Mm -hmm. So in the future, I think I'll just make sure that when a thought comes to my mind that I don't let it escape without going back to him and asking it a little more. Like, Hey, make this really clear to me. For sure. And I think a really good prayer to kind of pray regularly, it sort of reminds me of Jabez where he's praying, like, help me to not cause any harm, right? Like, it's not a type of prayer that many of us think to pray on a regular basis, but then you get to it and like, oh, that makes a ton of sense. So a similar kind of prayer along those lines is like, help me to to be sensitive to your promptings so that I don't miss these opportunities. And Mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's a good prayer too, because I think the closer you are to just having an active and personal and engaged relationship with the Lord, the more likely you are to respond to those things and not have those prayer regrets like we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, there also comes a point where, where you need to let go of guilt and, you know, things that have happened have happened. That unsaved beloved friend or family member who passed away they've already passed away, right? Like you can't change that. And so there comes a point where I think you need to let go of these prayer regrets and just move on, which is hard. And again, I I hesitate because some people do make that the excuse. Well, if God wanted me to tell that person about him, he would have made me. Or if God wanted me to pray that way, he would have told me to more specifically or things like that. And I think that's too fatalistic. But we also have to recognize that we can't, change, you know, we're stuck in a, like a finite timeline (laughs) that only goes one direction. Have you ever wondered if it's effective ever to pray for things that have already passed? Yes, because I, yeah. So my sci-fi mind, I always like, I'm, I always think about time and God and, you know, the Bible says, you know, things like a day to God is like a thousand years or implies Mm -hmm. that he, I mean, 
it's got to be, um, it, it seems like he's outside of the realm of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when I picture a timeline, so I have prayed for things and I know yeah. uh, I have. And the most actually, uh, not, I don't usually, but there are times mm -hmm. when I do and you know, I don't want to get into the, you know, I know there are some religions that actually pray for like, pray for the dead ancestors, and, yeah. you know, I'm not, yeah. I don't want to get into that, but I have prayed for stuff that ha like that happened in the past. Like there were times when I knew people were suffering that I didn't know. And I'm just like, God be with them in that, in that time. Just if that's possible, mm -hmm. like if that's how this all yeah. works, can you please comfort them? Yeah. Even though I have no idea if, you know, I'll never know if that was <laughs> right. a, a prayer that was answered or not. So, yeah. yeah. My son was adorable. My 10 year old, he came to me a few weeks ago. He says, there's so many questions that I want to know the answer to. I feel like when I get to heaven, it's going to take me like two hours to ask God them all. <laughs> <laughs> it was just adorable. So <laughs> yeah, that's how yeah. I feel he's got, too. He's got a two hour interview scheduled with the Lord. I love <laughs> Hopefully it. Hopefully far, far, far in the future. <laughs> Yeah, in our future, at least. So, but you know, it'll be outside of time. So, who knows? Maybe it's already happened. Oh no, you're gonna, you're gonna give me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, cause a, a breach in the space time continuum. Nope, nope. I'm la 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 la. <laughs> I'm not listening. <laughs> well, what you were saying about that, the regret reminded me of just a scripture that I definitely want us to, to keep in mind is 2 Corinthians 7 10. And it says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation mm -hmm. and leaves no mm -hmm. regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. And I know this is specifically talking, I think, about sorrow over sin, that it brings you to repentance, that leads to salvation. Um, but I think the same is true for this kind of thing too. Like there's a certain time, certain kind of regret that mm -hmm. leads to thoughts that will spiral you down into a bad place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the godly and right way, I think to respond to the regret that we have is to learn from it and to move forward. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. it reminds me of David when his son, um, Bathsheba's first child was mm. struck ill as a punishment and so he prays and he fasts with all of his might for God to save this child. And then the child dies and David gets himself up, he cleans up and he eats. Mm -hmm. And people are like, well, what's, you know, what's going on with this? And, and basically he's like, well, you know, when, when my child was alive, I thought God might hear me and relent and spare his life. My child's dead now. There's no reason for me to continue beating on heaven's door about this. And sometimes we do have to have to just let it go, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, not to say that someone is, is sinning if they're depressed for years no, after no, their no, child no, has no, been taken. That's not what I'm saying. But no, I know. I just wanted to make sure because <laughs> I know, for, yeah, I know that's you. not what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, absolutely. That is a, yeah, it, it is. It's like, okay, well, I, there's nothing I can do here, but in the future, mm -hmm. there are things I can do and I don't want my wallowing in self-pity and regret to keep me from affecting God's kingdom in a better, in a yeah. better positive way, you know, from yeah. here on out. It almost reminds me like, I'm not a crazy fan of the serendipity prayer. It's just like, it's a little too, um, cliche, but yeah. I think there's a sense to it. Like God, show me the things that you want me to actively be pounding down on heaven's door about, and then show me the things that you've already taken care of. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, we're, let's go back to Kitty. We had a couple hours where her future was slightly uncertain. We, we were told by the people who kind of own the property that we couldn't have her. Um, I was praying, I was bawling. Jamie and I were praying, like if there was any other way, God, you know, I mean, we were Open actively the door. praying. Yeah. yeah, like change someone's mind, soften someone's heart, go back and change the past so that, you know, like do something. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out like things weren't as bad as we thought because we were, you know, we did kind of at a very dramatic last minute story. We, we found our friends who were able to take her. I mean, that was for sure an answer to prayer. Um, and then beyond that, like once that happened, 
I recognized it was time to stop praying. Like I wanted to continue to pray and be like, okay, thanks for finding us a home for her. But now can you make sure that that home's with us? <laughs> like that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to keep on praying. But mm -hmm. there came a point where I recognized like God had moved. God had done the exact amount of work that he intended to do in that situation no more and no less and so then it was time for me to like then it was on me to kind of readjust my thinking you know mm -hmm. and I think that does take some discernment to know are you supposed to continue to pray against that fatal diagnosis or are you supposed to like start praying for comfort and peace and closure you know what i mean like those there's no one right answer it's it's depending on the situation we're not always going to get it right our own emotions are going to cloud our judgment but i think mm -hmm. that that's one of the goals is just god show me what i'm supposed to be praying for right here and mm -hmm. i think that if you live your life in a way that like i want to live my life in such a way that i'm not going to have a single prayer regret when i get to heaven that's going to be super powerful like mm -hmm. sometimes I, I i picture i'm not saying that this is how it's going to be and i don't even believe this is how it's going to be but like i picture we get to heaven and god shows you this like a movie of your life yeah. but he shows you you know since we've talked about before how god knows every possible outcome like, what if he showed you, Jamie, like how much of a difference your prayers could have made, right? right? So here's yeah. your life. You know what? What if you had prayed fervently about this thing mm -hmm. when I put it on your heart? What if you prayed for this person? And the thought of having that, like, I think about just how heavy I feel for not having prayed for my dog. And I recognize mm -hmm. she's a dog. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this isn't, we're not talking about someone's eternal salvation. We're not talking about as much as she was important and part of our family. We're not talking about a family member. Like, I recognize that. And even now, like, I still feel guilt and heaviness. What if I had just prayed about this situation? more thoroughly and then you extrapolate that and put it onto the things that do have eternal consequences yeah like praying for your unsaved friends or praying for politics or praying for um the pandemic or the economy or the judicial system any of these things and like i want to live in such a way that if god showed me that movie it's not going to be here's what could have happened if you had prayed better or more or harder like mm -hmm. here's what did happen because of your prayers. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I definitely like that angle of it because it is, I, and I think if living our lives that way, that's a, that's a nice tool to kind of put in the tool belt is, is mm -hmm. using, um, yes. or just using that as a litmus test for, mm -hmm. am I going to regret not praying for this or what could I be praying for now? And yeah. seeing, imagining how those prayers could impact mm -hmm. and then i feel like you're motivated by inspiration and not by guilt right? exactly like, yes i was told in a in actually this writing i forget if it was a class or a book basically it was brought to my attention somehow from writing fiction and writing relatable characters that shame is actually the strongest human emotion it's like the most deep-seated human emotion Mm. And like, I think closely related to that is a sense of guilt and regret and it's a strong emotion, but it's not the best, like who wants to pray only out of guilt mm -hmm. for the rest of their life, you know? And so when you can flip that kind of on its head and be like, I don't want to pray out of guilt. I want to pray so that I don't have any shame or guilt at all. You know, right. so my conscience is totally clean. That can be really, really inspiring. Yes. I think that is the be better way to look yeah. at it for sure. You know, like we talked some about incidentals. Do you have any other prayer regrets in your kind of arsenal of life experiences? Just a, oh man, if I had only prayed for this. Yes. And I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think about um, the specifics. Um, one kind of funny thing that um, doesn't have, it's again, it's not, specifically what have I not prayed for that I regret not praying for, but it's mm -hmm. when something does happen and I, something good happens. It was something that it was on my heart that I wanted to happen mm -hmm. and I regret not actively praying for it, 
Oh, right, right, So right. that God could get the glory for it, you know? Because of course he, yeah. he knows what you need. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, when that happens, but like sometimes I'll actually regret not speaking that need out, Mm -hmm. especially in front of other people, because I feel like, wow, wouldn't that have been cool if God, that person would see that, or Mm -hmm. I would have written that in my journal and I could look back in it and be like, look at that. God did that. Even yeah. though I know it was in my heart and he's just providing sometimes, for me. Yeah. It's sometimes kind of a that silly. Could be a, sometimes that could be a pat on your own back though. Exactly. You know, it, could. Like, it totally what I could. Pray for. But no, right. I totally get what you're yeah. saying. So that's kind of like one of those silly, I don't know. It just kind of a yeah. silly, silly regret. Like, oh man, wish I had prayed for that. <laughs> yeah. But you're right. That can be a pride thing. Yeah. And, yeah, definitely. Well, I've got another one. I'm going to bring us way down. Mine's not silly at all. Okay. Like, and this has stuck with me forever. I've, I'm pretty sure I've told you and I may have mentioned it on the podcast. And I have asked my friend for permission to share this story. But I had a friend who was pregnant. No problems with the pregnancy. Everything is fine. This was, you know, not her first child. There was no reason to expect anything to not go well. She wasn't like a close, close friend. But we both knew each other. We both knew that we were Christians. And I remember she was like a week away from her due date. We were on the phone for some just real quick reason. It wasn't like the type of friendship where we call and gab for an hour. You know, it was like we were scheduling something. And I really felt like asking her, hey, can I pray for your delivery? You know, because I figured it was probably going to be the last time we spoke before she had her baby. And I know that you're amazing at this. It's just, it's not something I'm 100% comfortable with, especially like since we had never done this before, her and I. And so I didn't, and I just told myself, oh, well, I'll pray for her on my own, which I probably did. Um, And her baby was stillborn. And I remember thinking, okay, so on the one hand, how insanely full of hubris is it to think, oh, well, you know, her baby didn't survive because I didn't pray, right? That's one way you could look at it. Um, Another way you could look at it is, well, of course, God knew he's in charge of this baby and every single breath this baby did or didn't take, he knew, but there's still a part of me that absolutely wishes I had prayed with her. Mm-hmm. Um, part of me, there's, you know, if I'm going to assign a number, 15% of me thinks maybe, maybe that is what it would have taken for her baby to survive. And the rest of me feels, you know, at the very least at that point, then she would know that she was covered in prayer. It might've made the entire situation easier. Um, yeah, that's so. Yeah, I warned you I was going to bring it down, but that's my most vivid prayer yeah. regret. There's part of, I don't know, part of me wonders also looking at the other side of it if there had been this intentional, concentrated time of prayer with another person about the baby and then the baby was stillborn, would that have felt like a slap in the face almost? Do you know it to her? Like looking back, thinking, well, God, we, I even prayed with someone else about it. I don't know. It sounds like she's like, a believer that yeah. has withstood this test. But Absolutely so has. it's not the kind of thing where it's someone with, with no faith or, you know, that, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, anyway, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened. That just, I, yeah. That's, yeah. That's and like I one. said, I recognize that it's very possible that, everything that happened would have happened regardless of whether or not I had prayed. Um, but I do recognize prayer does change things and it, yeah. it might have changed things. And you, that was another one where I, you know, I finally had to just let go of that heaviness and realize mm-hmm. what's done is done. Um, I did apologize to her. It felt really, really weird. And looking back, I'm not even sure. I think maybe it was more about relieving my conscience, mm-hmm. you know, like, she had her own grieving. I don't know that me adding my regrets on top of that helped at all. Um, yeah, hard situation though. So yeah, takeaway is if you feel a prompting to ask someone to pray with them, please follow through so that you don't, you don't have that kind of question mark hanging over. Yeah. Yeah. But she's doing very, very well. Great family, happy, loving people. Um, but yeah, they went through a really, really hard time for sure. On that wonderfully uplifting. I know, note. and I'm, you know, and I'm thinking because I'm sure that I have examples also, and I'm they're just not coming to mind. Um, so I guess they weren't meant to be shared. <laughs> I don't know. Are you being too fatalistic, Jamie? If we had prayed specifically that the right stories came to mind before the show started, that's, that's I guess the other thing. Oh, do you remember? 
no, that's it. I didn't pray at the beginning for the, yeah, I didn't pray that God would give me just the right story. <laughs> I think it's important to just point out that we can't get too superstitious about this stuff either. No, you really can't because it can some turn people, into... Mm -hmm. It can yeah. turn into almost like a totem, you know, well, yep. I'm not going to get into a car accident because I prayed or mm -hmm. I didn't pray. And so God's punishing me. Like God is not sitting there with his little notepad checking off. Did you pray for this? Did you pray for that? Did mm -hmm. you pray for this? That's not, that's not him. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's the other thing to keep in mind. It is. So, I mean, I think the takeaway from prayer regrets, regret. <laughs> well, we regret. I regret my prayers. <laughs> I'm sorry. We should not be, we are not trying to make fun of um, speech no, impediments. I was We're making fun of, of Jamie. No, I was thinking <laughs> of the guy on, on the Princess Bride, you know. That's right. The marriage guy. The marriage guy. Yeah. I'm but anyway, but prayer regrets. I feel like one of the big takeaways is that we should think, okay, I, in order to not have prayer regrets in the future, we can listen better. You know, it's not even yes. so much about, I need to pray more. Mm -hmm. I think it's first, let's, let's just listen more and pray yeah. more. And yeah. Yeah. But absolutely. Yeah. Becoming more in tune with God and, but not being afraid to pray when, you know, cause what do you have to lose is, I don't know. You could lose your dog, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> thanks for reminding me I'm no sorry. she's she's in a happy happy home and she we're is. very we're so thankful for that I am and too. I recognize I mean even you saw her she's scary for the first 10 seconds you meet her she is and that was always a problem she wasn't um, scary to me <laughs> okay. maybe because I knew her but yeah yeah if you don't know her she is she's very scary when you first meet her and so we recognize that and then once you do know her she's just a sweet lovey lovey dove cuddly wuddly sweet little thing she is <laughs> all right so this uh this episode of praying christian women is dedicated to kitty who has a new happy family and i guess if we want to leave you guys with anything it's that you will live your lives in such a way that when you do get to heaven and you do get to see all the contingencies and you all get the to see your movie you get to see that movie and you get to see it as it really happened instead of how it could have happened had you been more faithful in mm -hmm. prayer. I think that's a positive note to end on. That's so, a good note. I like yeah, that. Let's, let's end now with our blessing and benediction. May God meet all your needs today out of the abundance of his generous nature. May he grant you the daily bread you and your family need, and may he provide for you as he does for the birds of the air who do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet he feeds them. May he grant you all the clothing and shelter you need and bless you with the spirit of gratitude and contentment that rejoices in each good and perfect gift you've been given. Our benediction comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Bye.